I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and today I'm at SUNY 7 down here in Independence, Missouri. Today is the day of our Concours. We're going to have that at the Brigham Wagner Estate, which is about a 30-minute drive from here. So I'm going to get the cars warmed up, and we'll get over there. Well, here we are at the Bingham Wagner house. All the cars are getting staged right now. All five Harringtons are here now. Judging is about to start. Everyone's getting their cars ready. Not sure which class this is. This might be the cars that are not judged. And here's the modified Tigers. And here's personalized Tigers, which are the same performance as a stock Tiger. They have stock brakes. They're supposed to have the original engine, or at least up to a 302 but have been customized in other ways. This class they are calling Rare Roots. I wouldn't say that these cars are really that rare, but it's just the placeholder to throw everything else that doesn't have a class. Here's the stock Alpine class. The second car here is a 1962 factory Sebring car. This Sunbeam Alpine was one that ran the 12 hour of Sebring. Next up is personalized Alpine. Same thing as the Tigers. Stock performance, but personalized in other ways. And we have a couple modified Alpines. That one has a V6. It looks like this one also has a V6 in it. Here's the Harrington class. There are five of them here. I think this is the largest, equal to the largest showing of number of Harringtons that any of us that are attending the show has ever seen. And lastly, the stock Tiger class. Looks like the wheels are allowed to be changed because there's a lot of cars here in this class that have the incorrect wheel. A bunch of these have much wider tires than a Tiger is supposed to have as well. Here's a Series 2. Yes, he hasn't been active for. Yeah. Uh, there it goes. Okay, good stuff. I have the whole center of mine. You may, uh, okay, no, that's turn signal, okay, got a turn signal, good. Turn signal, good. Oh, really? How about uh, brake lights? Oh, really? Okay, good, it got it. Now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. The cross is the first time first thing you went? we no. went to in there because the car had literally been like hours. Oh. Kevin had the engine out because he blew out the clutch oh. within a week. <laughs> Yeah. 
Everyone's out eating lunch right now, so it's a good time to take a look at the Sebring car. Let's take a look under the bonnet. I thought this was a really neat feature. This is a quick jack attachment that just slides into the channel where the original bumper mounts would go. This car is, of course, right-hand drive, so the steering box is over on this side of the car. This gas filler is very neat. And there's a hose that runs over to the other side. The owner was nice enough to let me sit in here. I can have a good look at that giant Smith's tachometer. There's all the instrumentation. No carpet, of course. This is a race car. The vent on the back of the hard top. <coughs> There's a great color picture. You can see the Alpines right there. The start line of Sebring. The right hand side of the car does have a light to illuminate the number at night because this was, of course, a 12 hour race. It's pretty neat. On these meatballs, you can see that the numbers are actually hand painted. I don't know if you can see the grain in it there has a latch to keep the trunk lid shut and you can see the different rear lighting assembly there so I found another vintage race car this one raced at Tenerife in the Canary Islands. Actually, it's an Alpine V8. Uh, they, they couldn't use the tiger name in Europe, and so they had to call these Alpines, even though they are tigers. This one is left-hand drive because it was an export car. You can see on the VIN tag, it's a left-hand drive Roadster for export with the Ford engine in it. Passenger seat is original. There is a racing bucket for the driver and a little roll bar just for the driver only. You can see the history there. It was a uh, race for three years. It's a really neat vintage picture of it there. They have a log of some of the circuits this car ran at. This Harrington is called one of the promotional cars. It's a very, very early Harrington Le Mans. And this would have been given to a few of the magazines to test it out, but the original owner did race this car. This is the actual car that appeared on the cover of the April 1962 Car and Driver. A couple of photographs of it racing. Back in period. Once Chrysler bought Sunbeam, they redesigned the Alpine to this design, which looks a little bit like a baby Barracuda. This is built on the Sunbeam Aero platform. They do feature a similar engine to that used in the earlier Alpines. Here we have a beautiful Sunbeam Imp. One unusual feature on this car is this visor here. Not sure if that is a factory option or an aftermarket accessory that is definitely made for this car. It's a very Spartan dash. It reminds me of my Comer van. Had a dashboard that looked somewhat similar to that. And then here we have a Hillman Estate. So this is a four-door station wagon as we would call it here. This one has air conditioning and I'll show you how it has enough engine to power that air conditioning because this car is actually equipped with a Ford V8 just like you would find in a Sunbeam Tiger. They're actually using the Sunbeam valve covers there. You can see the expansion tank is the same as a Tiger. I don't know if they had a spare Tiger engine sitting around and they decided to put it into a Hillman, but I bet this goes down the road pretty well. A really fast imp that was at the autocross yesterday has shown up now. I was told that there's a BMW motorcycle sitting in the back of this car. So he's got stuffed in here a BMW K1200 LT motorcycle engine and of course there's a 
little turbo sitting over here. He did build an aluminum shield for his exhaust there. Try to keep some of the heat away from the engine. Well, that was definitely the most sunbeams that I've ever seen in one place. We won't find out the results from the Concorde or the Autocross until the banquet tonight, so I'll check back with you later after the banquet. I've made it back now. I had to drive right home after the banquet because the next day I'll be at the Iowa Jeep Show, but I now can report back the results from both the Autocross and the car show. I did not win anything at the Concorde. I showed two cars, my Tiger and my Harrington and neither of those cars were an award winner in their class. Not a surprise to me. But all of the owners that brought their Harrington to the show went home with one of these plaques. It has a Sunbeam Harrington Le Mans on it. It's based on one of the original advertisements that Sunbeam had made. And as I had expected, I came in third overall in the autocross and second in my place. So I got this award from the autocross I was told that this is Tiger Jade, maybe. I had a good time. I saw a lot of great sunbeams, and I hope that I can make it to another sunbeam event in years to come. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.